Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In this entry, we'll be taking a look at the Marquis of the High Table from John Wick, Chapter 4. An ambitious and bloodthirsty individual, the Marquis is an embodiment of the sordid values of the lofty criminal syndicate, serving to restore its blemished reputation after an infraction on its rules. A ruthless enforcer enjoying his position of luxury while endangering the lives of others for his own career advancement. At first glance, the aspect of the Marquis that stands out most prominently is his age, being relatively young and having authority over middle-aged men easily twice his age. Someone as youthful in his position was more than likely born with a silver spoon groomed and raised to carry on the family legacy. It doesn't take too long before we're acquainted with the Marquis's recurring trait, that he's a man of excellence who holds himself and those under him to impeccable standards, a trait that undoubtedly has its origin in his upbringing, with the Marquis reminiscing on a memorable lesson passed on from his father, that how you do anything is how you do everything a sentiment that we see immediately played out in the most trivial of activities, in something as mundane as adding sugar to one's coffee, an act which reflects the Marquis's nature of being precise and deliberate in everything he does. By virtue of his occupation, the Marquis serves as somewhat of an enforcer, here to clean up the mess that transpired from John Wick's violation of the Continental's rules. Given how long the infraction has been allowed to continue, and the fact that the Marquis was only elevated to this position by his guarantee to kill John, he is naturally under considerable pressure which he channels into a driven and no-nonsense personality. The Marquis might resent John for the trouble he's caused, but when we get down to it, it's nothing personal. He's just doing his job and cleaning up the mess. If the high table's rule of a life for a life were to remain true, then perhaps the Marquis himself would be at risk of punishment by death should he fail in his new role. Despite this insurmountable stress, he is generally calm and composed, conducting himself with a sense of professionalism, save for the occasional deviations in emotion which he attempts to restrain, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. Anger and frustration are perhaps the most apparent of these deviations, but even then it's still within the confines of his composure, often signaled through his piercing gaze. The Marquis has a specific trigger, a pet peeve of sorts that sets him off, namely a perceived lack of competence when the people around him aren't on the same page as him, which we see in his interactions with the Harbinger and with the Concierge. On both occasions, the Marquis is rife with frustration that they missed his concept of the big picture, that the goal was not to kill John Wick, but the idea of John Wick, sending a message to any potential insurgents that the breaking of rules will be met with swift retribution. With the Harbinger, the Marquis swallows his anger, subtly restraining himself with a wry smile after a brief contortion of his expression presumably because he cannot take any action against him. With the concierge, however, this anger is fully embraced, expressed through violence via killing him for speaking out of turn and for missing the point, and of course also as punishment for Winston for his failure in eliminating John. The Marquis's determination in killing John highlights a reckless and callous disregard for the lives of others sending scores of henchmen to their premature deaths with no consideration of the bloodbath he's responsible for. On that same note, the Marquis appears to have some twisted delight in bloodshed, a disturbing trait put on full display when he licks his lips in glee as Mr. Nobody takes the more grisly solution in removing the dagger. Not even a father's love for his daughter is beyond his scope of manipulation, with the Marquis holding Kane's daughter hostage to ensure his compliance. Pragmatism might be one of the core aspects of the Marquis's way of conducting his business, but we see he is not without an unscrupulous side, going back on his word as he did with Mr. Nobody, 
extending the goalpost so as to squeeze out as much value as he can from him. With the arranged duel to the death with John Wick, it would seem fair and reasonable that the Marquis would hold off on any further attacks on John so that he can show up to the duel alive. Sending his goons to continue the assault on John is underhanded to say the least. Technically, there might not be any actual rules that prohibit this, but in his interaction with his right-hand man, from how shady and ambiguous the Marquis has to phrase his attack on John, it reveals that it's a course of action that he knows is less than honorable. When considering the extent of villainy that the Marquis exhibits, we ultimately have to come back to his origin. The fact that he was likely born into this profession, set on to the path of a criminal not of his own volition, but through circumstances beyond his control. Of course, this doesn't justify his present atrocities, as the issue of choice is still left up to him. But we must also be careful not to discount the effects of his environment as the major contributory factor to his evil. Being born into such wealth and prestige is likely to leave a person quite spoiled and entitled, and if he can feast at the top of the food chain with no consequences, why should he feel the need to adopt the morally upright path if it would mean relinquishing the luxuries he was born with? To complicate the situation further, even if he wanted to, a clean exit from such a nefarious society is almost unheard of, and so perhaps the Marquis simply has to accept his lot in life and perform the job he was entrusted with. Yes, he's still an evil and reprehensible being, but it's an evil comparable to a drop in the bucket in light of the overall wickedness perpetuated by the backdrop of the high table. Regardless, the pursuit of power has a stronghold on the Marquis, with his ambition being the primary driver for all his actions an endless chase for the next level of promotion till he can ascend no further, an ambition that can only be rooted in greed, as when we observe the Marquis in his daily activities, he is already living the high life, basking himself in opulent luxuries like high tea, horse riding, and admiring vintage art. Any advancement in his position, then, couldn't possibly improve his already high quality of life but simply be for the sake of satiating his lust for power. At the end, the Marquis's ambition combined with his arrogance becomes his undoing, and he died as he lived, by the same rules and consequences he was so eager to enforce on others. While John pulled the trigger, ultimately it was the Marquis who brought his untimely demise on himself. To be so close to clinching his goal, only for the figurative rug to be pulled out from under him. A quick death that is unbefitting for someone who caused as much destruction as he did. A man given over to greed who established his advancement with the blood of others.